Dum justitia parebo in conspectu tuum satia. Festari tur gloria tuam. Exadi domine justitia mea. Intende de precazione mea. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritu et Sancto. Sicur erat in principio et nunc et semper et in secula seculorum. Amen. Ego autem cum justi In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Mass is offered for Joyce Landry. We shall also have a second collection for the maintenance and repairs. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Have mercy on us. 
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unit of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, Prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss, truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The second reading 
is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. We'll be reading the short form. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of God's grace that he granted us in the Beloved. In him, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, I warmly welcome you to this Mass. We celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. To encourage our discipleship that our journey can go on in our faith, today God is speaking to us about 
who we are. We are adopted sons and daughters. And this is only possible in Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ. This is who we are. What an honor. What a privilege. And so we are thankful to God and we are thankful to his son Jesus. Because in him we are adopted sons and daughters. This is who we are. This is our identity. And baptism enables us. We are connected to Christ through that. This is what St. Paul has spoken to us in the second reading. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will. But whatever privilege comes to us, again, there is a duty. We have a duty, and that duty is to go on to bear witness to be prophets in the world, to be mouthpieces of God, to testify to the truth, to be witnesses to justice, to stand for justice. A Christian is one that stands for justice, and this is what prophecy is about. We have heard in the, in the first reading what happened to the prophet Amos. He tried to go to preach in the northern kingdom in Samaria. And we have heard that he met an obstacle, Amaziah the priest, who dismissed him. He said, get away from here. You don't pro prophesy from here. You are from the southern kingdom in Judah. Why are you here? But we have heard the, the resilience of the prophet Amos. He continued. He did not give up. We are adopted sons and daughters who should not give up. When we stand for truth, when we stand for justice, there might be obstacles, just like this prophet met this obstacle, but he did not give up. He remained resilient. Again, as prophets of our time, Christ instructed his apostles on how to carry this mission out. He gave them instructions. He says, take nothing for the journey but a walking stick. We rely on God's help, confidence in God, trusting in God in our mission. He says at the same time, whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, live there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them, these that resist prophets. These that resist the truth, they will not get God's blessing. Remain resilient. Keep going. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with the oil many who were sick and cured them. Many people need healing. Many people need our attention. Many people need our prayer. Many people need, you know, reaching out to them. We are the modern day, the 12, to go out to cause this good change. We should not give up on this baptismal call. People need our attention. People need our, you know, our prayer, our support. Imitating the 12, the 12 did not give up. They drove out many demons. Many people are, you know, moved by the devil. They are agents of the devil. They resist the truth. They resist, you know, God's message and God's messengers. Here we are, armored with the Holy Spirit, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to continue being prophets of our time. We have also had another piece of counsel to encourage us. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two. Why two by two? Why a pair for mutual support? This is why we have husband and wife for mutual support. This is why our priests, we don't see one priest in a parish. They are normally a pair or even more. We are actually three here at this parish for mutual support. Why husband and wife for mutual support? 
Husband and wife are not supposed to be competitors. You know, sometimes a, a, a husband and the wife are competing. They are supposed to be complementary, offering support to one another. This is the Christian approach and understanding of what marriage should be. He sent them two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey. He said, no money in their belts. Wherever they will go, they will be supported. I've lived in this parish for some time now, and you have kept supporting us, and you have kept supporting the parish. I do not come with money from Uganda. My superior did not send me here with money, but you have kept supporting us here and there. And so we thank you for the support that you give to the parish, that you give to us messengers of God, and we urge you to continue. Don't give up on that, on that generosity. And so he says, they were, they were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. The messengers are to live a simple lifestyle. I remember when we were at the novitiate, our novice master used to underline this. A priest, a religious, is to live a simple lifestyle. Don't complicate your life. Live a simple lifestyle. And was getting it directly from here. To wear sandals, but not a second tunic. This is why we see, when we can still see, the religious wear one type of dress all the time. A simple lifestyle. A simple lifestyle. We'll see them. And these instructions are still, you know, relevant even during our time. A Christian is one that lives a simple lifestyle. Trusting in God. Relying on God. May these reflections encourage our discipleship through Christ our Lord. And, and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for us salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the Pope's monthly intention, that the sacrament of the anointing of the sick confer to those who receive it and their loved ones the power of the Lord become evermore a visible sign of compassion and hope for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Cardinal Sean, our Archbishop, and all the bishops, that they may exercise their ministry with supernatural courage and fidelity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our political leaders, 
that they heed the calling of God to build a culture of life, beginning with natural conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who hunger for meaning and purpose in our daily lives, that our needs will be satisfied by turning to Jesus, the living bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the soldiers on active duty and the first responders, that they persevere in faith with courage, hope and strength, nourished by Jesus, the living bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those being held hostage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in the bulletin, that they may be strengthened by the hope of the Lord's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world peace, especially conflicts in the Middle East and in Russia and Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved ones who have gone before us, may they find a new home in the mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember Joyce Landry, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers and, and answering them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice on yours may be accepted to God the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by, this who, by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that have failed us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity 
together with Francis R. Pope and Cardinal Shona Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Joyce Landry, whom you called from this world to yourself. Grant that she was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mass on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, greet all his Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not whether that you should enter under my roof, but I say what.
body of Christ. Blood of Christ. Blood of Christ. Servant testimonia eus in toto corde exquirum deo qui mandu cat carnem nea et vivit sanguinem Dominus. Adoro te devote latens deitas Sulvis figuris vere latitas, tibi secor meum totum subicit, qui a te condemnans totum deficit. Visus tactus custus in de valitur, Seraditus solo tuto creditur, credo quid quid dixit Dei filius, nil ac verbo veritatis verius. In cruce latebat sola deita, Atic latet simul et humanitas, ambo tamen credens atque convites, et hoc orbetivit ladro penites. Plaga sicut Thomas non uintu eo, Deum tamen meum te confideor, fac me tibi semper magis credere, in te smem avere te diligere. O memoria ale mortis domi, Anis vivus vitam prestans homini, prestam ea menti de die vivere, et te ilis semper duce sape.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go forth to serve, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hymn number 210, Holy God, we praise thy name. Number 210, we will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. So oh. 